Okay. Um, I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm all good to start if you like. Awesome. So I hand it over to Marissa. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, so everybody, uh, thank you, Hans, for the introduction. My name is Marissa. I am a fragrance specialist, and I am fortunate enough to work with two amazing brands that have just recently launched with Blue Mercury. And we thought it'd be really fun to get them both on this call today so you can have a really just like full scope of um, the insights of how two different brands have landed on this conscious beauty platform with Blue Mercury. Um, so I know a lot of you that signed up are especially interested in this conscious beauty world. Um, and as far as that pertains to fragrance, it's really interesting because um, there's kind of two categories under that umbrella and one is called green chemistry and then one is all natural. And they're both really just thoughtfully made and sustainably sourced. So we have today, we have Frances um, signing in from New Zealand. She is the founder of Aval. So Fran, what time is it there right now? Uh, I think it's 7 a.m. still or whatever that is, five past. Yeah, so that we're on Saturday, by the way. Oh my goodness, and on a weekend nonetheless. Yeah. So thank you so much. And John, John, I think you're on mute, but we have John, the founder of Hermetica, um, I believe in the Swiss Alps right now. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm in Gestart now and it's nine o'clock in the evening, three minutes past nine. Incredible. We've got the whole the whole world logging in for you people. So this is exciting. Um, and I thought we would just kick things off, like I said, talking about the Conscious Beauty platform. And if you're interested in, you know, clean beauty, everybody has their own kind of name for what they call it. But it's very hard to self-educate and kind of regulate what you're looking for if that's what you're interested in. So um, I really value what Blue Mercury has done. They've really done the legwork for you and, you know, sought out the best brands in each of those categories. Um, and I'd love to hear from John specifically kind of what Conscious Beauty means to you and Hermetica and how it applies to the brand. Well, great. Well, um, all of this started like maybe three and a half years ago when one morning I was in my bathroom, my daughter walked in and she told me to turn off the tap when I was brushing my teeth. And I said, why, Belen? She goes to me, Papa, you're wasting water. Water is a precious resource. And she was seven years old. And she was learning this in school at seven years old, that water was a precious resource and that you only need one glass of water to brush your teeth. You don't have to leave the tap running. And you know, I'm Irish. I love the sound of fresh running water in the morning. So. <laughs> There was my daughter telling me to be more responsible. And I said to my wife, who's also the co-founder of Hermetica, Clara, and we've, we've developed uh, other fragrance brands as well. So we've been working in this industry for like nearly 13 years. I said, what are we doing about tomorrow? When we look back on this, what will our children say about the work that we've done? What have we added to the industry? What, have we, what, what big risks have we taken? Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and we really thought about it. And we got a white piece of paper out. And on top of that white, white piece of paper, we wrote tomorrow's fragrances. And then we wrote down everything we thought tomorrow's fragrances could be. And that's how we came up with Hermetica. That's where the name comes from, from the Hermetic texts, which were from the alchemists. Because people who strive to make things better, people who strive to create, people like Cleopatra, who was one of the first um, patrons of the alchemists, you know, she had a thousand alchemists trying to work on the exit of life to live forever. We're still trying to work on it today. But, you know, if you, if you strive to make something better for tomorrow and you believe in your convictions, you'll get there. And so that was really our starting point, how to make tomorrow's fragrances. And we thought about things like renewable, refillable, sustainable, um, uh, cruelty-free, vegan. And um, we, we thought about all of these things and what could we do? And then we went out and we talked to some of our noses and said to guys, you want the biggest, the biggest challenge you've ever had in your lives? You're only part of this. And they jumped on it. And then after a year and a half, the project didn't work. We couldn't get the fragrances to work. And we kept going. And I was going to pull the plug on the project. We'd invested a lot, a lot of money into this. And then what happened? They finally broke through. Clara and Alinor broke through at Philip and they found a way to make alcohol-free, fragrances with a patented moisturizer inside. They found a way to make these last long and a long, long time. And that was a factor for us, was having long lasting fragrances. So we finished with having clean, 
fragrances using green alchemy, which you can talk about, or green chemistry, which are moisturizer inside and they're long lasting. And that was our dream. And so in, in bottles that are made from recycled glass from the beaches of Normandy, um, refillable bottles. So you only buy the bottle once, you only use the cap once, you just buy a refill. And, um, you know, everything there, working on green chemistry, working on the best mix of natural, natural ingredients and also of molecular ingredients. Awesome. Why? Because that. we want to use the best of both. And why? Because there are some natural ingredients that can be very harmful. And we want to explain how good a lot of synthetic or molecules can be because they're absolutely fantastic and they're proven. And so we, what, we created a codex. And what's a codex? We created a dictionary of all the ingredients and fragrance we're using so that the people of today, my daughter's generation, can go out and Google it beforehand and find out what's actually in their fragrance and go for it. And that's how we got to this. And I love Blue Mercury's word conscious because this consciousness in, 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 in beauty and this consciousness of trying to strive for tomorrow is what we're all about. So I don't know if I've answered your question, but I, I think I got a bit of it. You have answered it beautifully. And um, you touched on another you know, word and phrasing that I love um, when you said you know, that it's moisturizing. Has the other, it's a functional fragrance, Hermetica, which I really love. It's not just, it doesn't just make you smell good, but it's functional and that it's also moisturizing on your skin, which is something we'll definitely talk more about later in today's class. So. That was Marissa, awesome. I, love, I love the word sensual. I think it's very sensual on the skin Ooh, because when you actually that. touch it, it's very sensual. <laughs> you know, we say molecular fragrance, molecular skin fragrances, molecular love fragrances. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, fantastic. So uh, Francis, I, I thought this could kind of segue into knowing that you were previously in the beginning of your career, a winemaker. I know that you're really just in tune with kind of the ingredients that you source and how you like to use them in your products, whether you're making wine or perfume. So I'd love to hear from you on kind of any struggles or things that you have to work through in creating an all natural perfume. I can imagine a lot of ingredients are not available to you and what you've had to do to overcome that. Yeah, cool. Uh, firstly, it's nice to hear John's story. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this with another brand. So it's, um, it's cool to hear someone on a similar journey, but also uh, I think we're coming at it almost from opposite ends. So um, I, I founded Arbol uh, seven years ago. We launched our first fragrance. And as Marissa said, my background was winemaking um, in New Zealand. Uh, but I first the uh, kind of inspiration for Abel was uh, nearly a decade ago and I'd moved to Amsterdam uh, and started to really fall in love with this world of uh, independent perfumery. Uh, and at the same time, you know, for me, it was really about finding a natural product. Um, and that's a personal thing. Uh, I came from, I grew up on a farm in New Zealand. My mum's a yoga teacher. And so I, I had this, uh, already a very natural portfolio of um, products in my life, let's say. Uh, and at the time you could find um, beautiful organic natural skincare and makeup. You know, if I went to a Blue Mercury like um, store in Amsterdam, there'd be uh, RMS Beauty and K of Ice and you know, these beautiful products. Um, and when I asked for a natural perfume, I was told, oh, it's not possible, they're not sophisticated. If you want natural perfume, you have to go to the organic uh, supermarket, you know, like Whole Foods. And I thought, oh, that's so weird. Like, I don't want to buy my perfume from a supermarket, right? Mm -hmm. I want to buy, I want the natural perfume, but I want it to be chic and modern and sophisticated. And I want to buy it from um, these beautiful stores. Uh, so I really, at the time, uh, took it as a bit of a, I don't know, a personal challenge or, you know, it felt so strange to me that that product wasn't out there. Um, and so from the get go, we kind of knew that uh, we were, um, let's say, up against uh, a very um, cynical industry when it came to natural perfumes, you know, so I got told over and over again, it wasn't possible. Um, but I, I kind of thought, you know, that's so strange, you know, 100 years ago, 150, 300 years ago, uh, we were making natural perfumes. So, you know, obviously, it's possible. And then kind of threading in what John's saying, you know, we're not anti science. Um, I studied science, science in order to be a winemaker. So, um, but we really thought, how can we use that, uh, the natural, um, let's say the artisanal natural of the past, uh, but also the latest in natural science, you know? And so 
we really uh, we take a precision approach to, to creating a natural perfume. We work with a wonderful master perfumer. Um, I'm from New Zealand and Isaac Sinclair, our master perfumer, is also from New Zealand. He's the only uh, master perfumer from the whole New Zealand, Australia region ever. So he's a super nice guy. Um, and together we've worked on almost all of our fragrances. Uh, and yeah, look, we do hundreds, thousands of trials, uh, of perfume development takes, uh, sometimes never less than a year and, and our longest pink iris was our most difficult to create and it took uh, nearly three years and I think Isaac and I nearly fell out over the creation process because even he at one point was like what you want is not possible you know you <laughs> want this uh, modern floral and you're not willing to use synthetics you know so um, but we got there in the end so yeah, there are definitely struggles, but I always say that, uh, you know, a limitation breeds creativity, you know, and, and we really focus on that. So That's awesome. Well, I think the fight was worth it for Pink Iris because <laughs> I've never even told you this story, but my, my mother wore the same perfume for the past 25 years, and she and my father heart said she'd never wear anything else. And Pink Iris, thankfully, was the first thing that got her off of that bandwagon. And is, she's obsessed with it. She's on her second bottle. So you did good. <laughs> nice. Very happy to hear that. Yeah. Um, and before we get into more about the brand story, I just think equally setting the stage, talking about the clean beauty aspect, but also the sustainability aspect that both of these brands bring to the table. And um, I think we can start with Hermetica. One thing that I'll point out that I love doing, if you go on the Herme uh, the Blue Mercury website, you'll see this video now live, but we'll show you that you can reuse the bottles like John said. So it's one of the few perfume brands on the market that the atomizer twists off and you can reuse the bottle. So what I do here is I like to use it for flowers, a little vase. I know some people that will put maybe their own little um, like water and some essential oils to make a face mist or something like that, but it's reusable. So I love that. And um, John, I would love for you to tell us more about the uh, Blue Mercury exclusive plant a tree initiative that we have in place. Well, um, we actually um, came up with the idea of, of how could we give back and how could we compensate? Because um, when you're an international company and you know, you're independent, you still are taking product from one country to another. You still are traveling. And so you still have got a carbon footprint. So, and there's still some things in your processes that you'd like to better. We said, why don't we compensate from day one all those things which we're going to get better at, but today it's really hard to get better. So that's what we did. So we said, let's compensate for all of that movement, our traveling around the world, everything. And we've, we've put together, we've taken part of the, the margin out of the product to make sure that we can plant a tree for every product that is sold. And I think it's a wonderful, exclusive thing we're doing at Blue Mercury now. We've got two plantations, one in Madagascar, one in Indonesia. And these are um, regulated plantations where we plant a tree for every fragrance that has been sold. So at least when you know, you, you're buying into a brand, and that's why I love the word conscious beauty, we're kind of what we do, you know, we're recycled glass and sand from the beaches in Normandy going into the bottles. The refillable bottles that you have there, you switch off, those actually, we've got refills you can put in as well. Exactly. So you just take it off, but you can buy a refill, um, which is a value added product that you just fill up the bottle again. So you can actually fill the bottle. You only buy the crystal bottle once. Um, and so just really, it's kind of, I think it was about bringing together all these people that were really wanted to strive for tomorrow to make it happen. And, um, and, and that, that's really how it did. And then ideas come up and uh, one of our members of our team, um, he actually is a beekeeper. And uh, I come, by the way, um, um, Franz, I come from a farm as well. I My dad spent it. seven years in New Zealand working on a farm in New Zealand. Um, so I New Zealand is, is, is a big so part of us. And <laughs> well, there you go. What can I say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so, so um, you know, coming there, you had to be creative. Being young on a farm, you had to be creative, or else you were given more work to do. So that's exactly. that's why we that's why we had to kind of strive and do things. So, getting back to the subject of um, of of um, why we were um, uh, working on 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 planting trees because this this person, a team member, was passionate. Look, 
I love trees. I work with trees. I make tree houses. I've got a small forest. I've got these bees. Can we not do so? I said, yes, do what you love. Go for it. And I think it's the passion of the people and the team because even though Clara and I, are, we, are in the, we, we love what we do, without having a really passionate team around us and people around the world who believe in it and people like you guys in Blue Mercury, you, Marissa, and the team in the US, nothing happens. It's all about being contagious consciousness. And I think if we can get this contagious consciousness is going further, I think we're just going to do our small bit because our own opinion and belief is that it's not the big things that change the world. It's the accumulation of the small things. And if everyone can do a small thing like this that goes along, well, then the world. Yeah, I think that's really cool. And I think it's uh, I'll so people to feel better. Yeah, I think it's really special that people can know when you're shopping on Blue Mercury that when you buy a bottle of Hermetica perfume, you've just planted a tree. So that's pretty major. Um, so I love that you guys do that. Um, and Francis, I there's there's a lot of factors to speak about how um, you know socially responsible you guys are, but especially you know the one percent for the planet, and then also I know you guys work with Mary's Meals. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of telling us a few of the things that you guys try to implement into your brand. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, uh, with sustainability, I think um, it just has to be a priority for all of us. And we're really, um, we're on a continual journey. Uh, we try things, sometimes they don't work as well. And so that's, um, for us, it's really about uh, every day, every month, we're trying to do new initiatives and new things that, um, yeah, like you say, uh, John, like awaken consciousness in our consumers as well um, and our partners. Um, we've been doing 1% for the planet. So 1% of our revenue goes to environmental causes. Uh, we've been doing that for three years now. And we, we select environmental causes that we uh, really believe will have an impact in the, in the community that the ingredients come from. So for example, with white vetiver, uh, one of our fragrances, the vetiver comes from Haiti and we support this amazing uh, grassroots foundation in Haiti where they're literally um, putting in sanitation because that's a, a real problem in Haiti and using the, um, the human waste to uh, form compost for the crops. So, you know, we choose these kind of uh, small grassroots um, yeah, community driven kind of projects and um, that we really feel we can be a part of. Uh, we, with the Mary's Meals, that's, you know, that's just another little thing. Um, sometimes you feel like you can't do enough, but I think, yeah, all these little things matter. Um, with every bottle that we sell online, we give a meal to a child in need. Um, and then in terms of the product, it's, it's a real continual journey. You know, you're always balancing the the beauty of, you know, a luxury product that should bring joy. You know, that's that's the number one thing I think with fragrance, right? If it's not bringing joy, there's there's kind of no no need for it. So um, it's about balancing that with making sure that it does no harm throughout the throughout the supply chain. So yeah, I don't know. That's a couple of things we're doing, and like you say, Marissa, there's always little things we're we're doing. But exactly, and I I don't think it's little. I think donating a meal to a child in need for every bottle sold is also incredible to say the least. So um, we can all feel good about this. And I think before we get into creative direction and and how these new references come about and the brands are created, I don't want to leave you guys too much in the dark. So I'd like to just give a little bit about each of these brands and what what they're offering. Um, so I'll start with Hermetica. Again, this is a Parisian brand, so it's Hermetica Paris. Uh, the founder, John, is on with us. And if you know nothing about the brand and, and are maybe just signing a little bit late, I'd like to let you know that this is an alcohol-free brand. So they have replaced the alcohol with a patented moisturizing base. And what that does is a couple of things. One, there is no dry down time required. So when you're in your Blue Mercury store and you're trying these on, you don't have to say, oh, well, let me walk around the store. Let me wait until I get home. It's gonna reveal the heart of the fragrance immediately, which is fantastic. Um, also, because there's no alcohol, it's gonna be safe on your hair. It's gonna be safe on delicate skin. Um, but the best thing is that they replace the alcohol with a moisturizing base. So it's really kind of like this hybrid of skincare and fragrance. Um, and it's scientifically proven to moisturize your skin for four hours or more. So I'm gonna try to do a little demo on my thing here for you. Um, this is my QVC moment. So you are actually able to see it kind of sit on my hand and, and it's actually like liquidy. 
and then I rub it in, which your, you know, traditional perfumes you wouldn't do this with, but you, you're encouraged to do it with this formula. And then I'm going to have this beautiful little glow, and it's going to be super fragrant because it's also scientifically proven that moisturized skin retains fragrance longer. So these are really long lasting. I love using the extra on the tips of my hair for a little moisture and a little fragrance. Um, and you should know that these uh, 50 ml bottles are $100. The one reference called The Source is 120, and that one is really special. And John, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about The Source, why it's called The Source, and why it's a bit more expensive. Okay. Well, um, just one other thing as well, uh, Marissa. Actually, because there's no alcohol, you can actually use it with your sun, sun, sun protection as well. And it's been going down very well, actually, in Australia and many countries where they have um, a lot of SPFs in their skincare because this does not affect the skincare and it goes very well with that. So it's kind of really for this time of year, it's a, also a fragrance that a lot of people find very comfortable to wear. Um, awesome. The source. Well, the source was what we what made, made the brand. The source was, it, it is actually a, a, um, a vertical, dry, green, ambery, fragrance and it's this is what's brought modernity to fragrances of the last 10 years in the world is having this sort of a complex bringing something that is that is amber that's vertical that is fresh that's green and dry and so this this movement that's happened in fragrances we said if we can make this sort of complexity in a fragrance like hermetica um and with, with putting together this new moisturizing formula, we said, well, that could be amazing. And this, we used this base and when it worked, when we got this actual, we call it the source, this formula to work, then we used it in every one of the fragrances. So it actually is between 30 to 40% of the source in every one of the other fragrances. So therefore you can use it as an amplifier or as a base, and you can even wear it as a base under any fragrance you want, and it amplifies it as well and amazing the effect you can have. So it's, um, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's what we call like, you know, something we kind of, we would like to say we fell upon. I would like to say the team worked so hard to create it. And we eventually got there and it's our source one. And it's the, it is actually the stem of the tree. And every other fragrance is a branch from that. Absolutely, yeah. And I, for that reason, I love recommending that as a gift because you can't go wrong. Even if they, the, the recipient has a signature fragrance they love, the source can just be used as an enhancer, as John said, to make uh, that fragrance last longer and be a bit fresher. Um, so it's really a universal gift that you can give. Um, and then uh, just switching gears to Oval, I want to show you both sizes that are available at Blue Mercury. So we've got a 15 ml and we've got a 50 ml. And there are these really beautiful, simplistic, modern, um, I love the magnetic caps, in case anybody hasn't seen these, they're beautiful. Um, and one thing that I like to talk about specifically within the Opal collection, for me, it, a call out is nurture. I just think it's really unique. And again, speaking about that concept of functional fragrance, um, I feel like this really fits that mold. So um, <clears throat> nurture was created by mothers for mothers. And the idea is to help a newer expecting mom with things like um, nausea and, and you know tiredness and things like that. So there's um, ginger in there to help with the anti-nausea. Um, there's lavender to help with calming elements. Um, and I've gifted this to countless uh, expecting moms and they rave about it and they continue wearing it well past uh, when the baby is born. Um, my other favorite stories I hear is some people use this as a pillow mist um, at night on their bed because it's so, so calming. Um, but Fran, I was hoping you could probably give a much better spiel about this than me. So if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit more about nurture. <laughs> I think you do very well, actually, Marissa. Um, but yeah, look, the inspiration for Nurture, it's a collaboration fragrance that we um, brought into the world with uh, Grey Label. They're an organic children's wear brand. Um, and I know the founder, Emily, in uh, Amsterdam. And together we had this idea to create, yeah, this very nurturing, soft, calming fragrance um, for mothers. And I think, you know, often when people get pregnant, they become very aware of what they're putting on their skin. You know, and we see a lot of people um, stop wearing fragrance, uh, which, you know, feels a little bit sad, given that you have to give up uh, wine and coffee, and, you know, all of those other things. Um, but they become very aware of what's going on their skin. And so we wanted to create uh, this fragrance that's not just safe for pregnancy, and it, it, obviously it is safe for pregnancy, but it also has all of these 
uh, beautiful yeah side effects um, and so uh, we use uh, like very low allergen so it's allergen free so we've done all of the kind of homework for making it good for you while you're um, pregnant um, and then like Marissa said you know there's ginger anti-nausea rose is very calming uh, orange blossom is very uh, energizing um, and the other nice thing to mention there is that um, when we had this idea for the fragrance, I thought, okay, well, Isaac, our perfumer, uh, I mentioned we work with him on all of our fragrances, but I thought he's definitely not the right perfumer for this fragrance. You know, he's, uh, he's a bit rock star and he's not a mother. Um, <laughs> But uh, his uh, wife is a French perfumer, Fanny Grau, and I thought, oh, Fanny would just be, I'm going to give her a call and just see if she's interested. And so I called Fanny uh, and she said, do you know I'm pregnant? And I said, I, I have no idea, you know, I just thought it was nice. And so um, all of us, she was about five weeks pregnant, by the way, she just found out and she thought Isaac must have told me but um it was kind of this meant to be and i called emily back the founder of gray label and i said fanny's pregnant and she said oh my god okay we, like we definitely do this um it was uh, having a pregnant perfumer it did put um pressure on the timelines so we had like a very hard deadline with nurture um but in in truth it just came together so beautifully actually um it was meant to be uh, and actually, Marissa, you say about the pregnant friends, my favorite anecdote is that um, we have this very cool kind of urban streetwear store in Amsterdam, and the guys in the store said, hey, you didn't offer us nurture, you know, as a, as a retail account. And I said, yeah, but, uh, you know, like, so it means streetwear store. And they said, yeah, we like it. We saw it. We want it. And I said, oh, well, you can have it, you know, of course. And then next time I go in, um, one of the guys says, I thought you'd like to know, or it was a bit later, um, we've got this, you know, huge six foot four dude with tattoos everywhere and he loves nurture. <laughs> you know, he buys it all the time. So that's awesome. um, all kinds of people need nurturing. I think that's, that's I kind of nice. It. I couldn't agree more, especially, yeah. yes, yes. We all need some zen in our life. So nurture is perfect for that. Um, I know a couple of people inquired if we could talk about kind of the creative direction of, um, you know, not only creating a new brand, but a, a new fragrance within that brand. So, John, if you could tell us a little bit about kind of what your, you and your team do when you're launching something new and do you start with the ingredient, do you start with the name, what does that process look like? Well, um, Fred, well, that side of the side is, is, is Clara, who's my wife, who's the co-founder. She's in charge of the whole creative side. And just going back to um, um, what France was saying there, I remember her making a perfume many years ago when she was pregnant. And it's a completely different way to make fragrances when you're pregnant because your yeah. nose does change. Your nose becomes so much more sensitive. It's a way of protecting, actually. It's a protection mechanism to all animals and human beings. Your nose becomes way more sensitive to block you, to stop you from getting any sort of danger. Wow. So it's a, And that's why, that's why it's like that. Because it, I think it's like... I think it's three times more sensitive your nose is no, than normal when you are pregnant and it changes all your sense. Oh, so um, just getting back to that story. Um, well, no, how does it work? Well, uh, firstly, we're, we're Clara and the team and we work with a number of different noses um, are always playing. Are always, we're, they're always playing with different things. Uh, Clara, my wife's a poet. And, and she's written slam for each one of these. She works on slam for Hermetica. Um, each poem's got it. So, so, so she's always writing, working with ideas, and she's got her idea box. And so she's constantly um, um, nourishing the noses with ideas and they're putting things aside. There's so many little samples going backwards and forwards all the time. And then things pop out. And then suddenly she goes, this one is right. And then she comes and she's chatting with us and she's chatting with the, 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 the innovation team of how they're working and they pick it up and they go through it. And then it's like, it's kind of like a, 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 um, uh, a scintillating thing. One idea pops another idea and it all comes together. It's wonderful. It's kind of like there's one beautiful flower in the middle and then suddenly it becomes a bouquet with all of the ideas that have been put together. And that's how it's made really is. It's a, it's a team process. Um, I think there's always being a starting point. Um, they can change a bit with people in it, but that, that's how we work. It's with the creativity and noses and the long-term relationship that Clara has built with them over the years working on it. And, 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 that's, it's, and that's why I think 
in, in indie companies, independent companies can put that sort of love and attention to that. And also, one other thing I'd like to say is that um, most noses are, are not able to express themselves with a lot of the work they're doing. And when they get a chance to really, when you know a nose, you really know what they're good at and what they really like working. Because every nose is a human being. They've got ingredients they prefer working with and they don't like working with. And so you've really got to work with them and help them and bring them along and challenge them. And that's part of a relationship, like a couple. And that getting each other better and helping each other to get better, that's what we do. And that's how it works. It really is it's confidence, trust, and I think Genius from the Noses and Clara working together. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's really organic. You're not chasing the trends, which is something that is a great point in and of itself that both Avil and Hermetic and Paris are both very artisanal niche indie brands. They're not you know, designer commercial brands you're going to see in every store. So it's, they're really quite exclusive and quite artisanal. So that's what makes them so special. Um, and Francis, I, you know, I always try to explain to people, they ask, you know, why is there a color associated with each name of these perfumes? We have red Santal, we have pink Iris, we have green Cedar. Um, and I think that has to do with some of the direction when you're making them. So if you can maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always talk about my winemaking roots when I talk about our creative um, process. So uh, I came to the industry, you know, very green. I, I didn't work for a cosmetics company or anything like that. Um, and so I really uh, followed my nose, I guess, in terms of process. And so the way that Isaac and I work is that we um, often, you know, we always get together at the start of a creation process. Uh, ideally, there's no time pressure. Like you said, John, I think um, sometimes the best, some of our fragrances we've started and then stopped after a few months and all of a sudden you pick them up three years later and think, hang on, that was, you know, I'm, I'm, all of a sudden I'm inspired again. But um, we always start with the ingredients and I say it's kind of like... Um, I would say like a chef goes to the market and says, uh, look, these tomatoes, you know, they're so ripe. I, what shall I make with them today, basically? And so we get a whole lot of uh, raw materials out and we, uh, Isaac and I will just start smelling, you know, and we'll say, um, oh, I'm really inspired by vetiver today, you know, for example, and then we'll say, okay, what are all the different, you know, producers and regions that we can source vetiver from? And then we'll get all of those out and then we'll look at, you know, what's really connecting with us. Um, and then the color pairing, um, I see color and smell. <laughs> and I, I, I've said this quite, quite often and a lot of people start nodding, you know, I think it's, it's relatively common. Um, so for me, uh, it's really important to get a kind of a visual creative direction. I'm a very visual person. Um, and so once we've kind of isolated a, a hero ingredient, um, I like to pair it with the color so that we can really, uh, you know, together it kind of forms that, uh, the world in which we're heading. And so for vetiver, for example, um, it could be green vetiver or gray vetiver, or, you know, vetiver can go in all kinds of different directions, but by saying white vetiver, it was really, um, kind of cementing this crisp layers of white on white, this very fresh, um, zesty, aromatic kind of uh, scent. So with all of our perfumes, yeah, it's kind of, that is our creative direction. We don't write briefs. We don't, um, you know, we give, I give Isaac a lot of creative freedom because that's also, um, for him, one of the, the coolest things about working for, with an independent brand, like John said, you know, they can be creative, so. Yeah. yeah, it gives an identity to each of the perfumes, you know, gray labdanum is really like the darkest in the collection and, and you always say that's kind of like the rock and roll, like, you know, leather jacket wearing customer. So some people like to, to fit a mold or are looking to be a certain persona on a given day. So if you're looking to be a bit edgier one day, you can go with gray labdanum. If you're being more classic, you go with pink iris. So I think it just gives a little persona to each of the scents, which is really nice. Yeah. And also, look, I'm very mindful that, um, I often get asked like what was the most important thing I took from wine to perfume and I think the response is the ability to talk about smells you know we don't in general humans we don't have much of a vocabulary for smells um, and people are kind of almost scared you know I remember in wine people would swirl uh, does it smell like um, apple you know people are scared to talk about smells and so um, <laughs> We try to create, we try to use all of the senses. So the color gives you a cue. 
uh, all of our perfumes have a soundtrack that also gives a cue. Um, like John, all of our perfumes have a poem, you know? So we try to use all of the senses to kind of build up the complexity around the, the smell. Awesome. Um, so uh, another thing that we saw some questions about is everybody kind of asking for help with scent diagnostic. And, you know, when you're looking for your next perfume, where do I start? How do I know which one is for me? Um, especially when you're not able to get to a store. So, you know, naturally it's easier said than done, but I think that we can all give some suggestions for both buying online and buying in store. So I can start by giving a in-store suggestion that I know um, all the salespeople on the call will appreciate. You know, it, it's really helpful if you're really trying to transition and maybe you're saying, I have this perfume, but I'm trying to get into conscious beauty. I want a new perfume, but I want it to smell like that. You know, nobody's a walking dictionary of every perfume on the market. So just naming the brand and the reference isn't hugely helpful. So I would recommend bringing the bottle with you, bring a sample of it so that the salesperson can smell it because that'll much better help them kind of find something more suited in the direction you're looking to go. So that would be my tip um, on that front. Um, naturally, we will also, sh I can share with you guys right now, both brands, if you're buying online, um, have discovery kits available. So this is the Oppo discovery kit, upside down. Um, and it has the whole collection and these are $35. So you can smell the whole collection at home and that's really fun. And um, Hermetica's Super Luxe at also $35, which is great. And this has all 13 fragrances. And I will open this for you guys and show you in a bit. But I thought, um, John, could you maybe give some advice on how you suggest people find their next fragrance? Well, um, I, I, I really, when, I, when I'm meeting people, I really kind of like see what, you know, first for like, couple of questions about what are, what are they looking for? What are they doing today? Whatever it is. And then suddenly I just pop one on. And I'm um, from, mm -hmm. from usually from the person I get one on and I get them to try it. And either they love it or hate it, but then it will start a conversation to go somewhere else. So I'll always try um, either on a blotter or on the skin to try one where we're going. And then from there on, it gives you a starting point. And I think a lot of people are, are, are quite blocked and they often you, is this for men or for women? Is this um, I don't know if someone will like it on me. How should I know this will be right for my husband or my wife? I always say that if you like a perfume yourself, other people will like it on you. It really is a question of owning your perfume and believing in it. It's like coming home for, with a new haircut. If you ask people, does, mm -hmm. does, does, does this look good on me? And, you, and, you, and, you, and you're not sure of yourself, people don't know what to answer. Um, but if you come home and you're wearing a lovely new haircut, people go, wow, you look great. And the same thing with a new perfume. You try a perfume that you love, those who love you will love it on you. And I think it's this question of, 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 uh, of just um, like, like, it's just like trying it out, going for it and, and enjoying the moment. And that's why we do it at Hermetic. We say really touching your skin, feel it, smell it, all the senses together. And, and that's what brings it, brings it to be something, a special moment and a special meeting. Love that. You're kind of selling confidence, which is great. So I agree. I think, um, I think it's interesting creating a fragrance wardrobe for yourself. So just because you have a floral at home that you love, maybe you don't need a whole collection of florals. Maybe you mix it up and you have something for each day, each occasion. Um, and I wanted to just show you guys now that I have it open. This is the Hermetica Discovery Kit. So again, this has all 13 um, and a beautiful presentation. It's a great gift. It comes with a booklet that tells you all about it as well. So both brands have those for $35. Um, and Fran, what are your suggestions on kind of people breaking in? Where should they start with Avil? Which fragrance? What direction should they try? Yeah, I mean, trying it on your skin is just a, an absolute necessity. So I think uh, don't be afraid. I always say, you know, I don't want anyone buying a perfume who is not in love with it, you know? So please don't buy without trying. Um, you know, try it on your skin. Uh, there's samples, discovery sets, uh, super nice people in store to help. And I think, um, yeah, use all of those tools and enjoy the journey, you know? I think um, I, I'd love to see, someone said to me, um, you know, do you think you can see a day when people do um, smell like scent sessions in the same way we do wine tastings? And I thought, wouldn't that be cool? You know, you're actually kind of discovering and learning. And so I think um, I, I'd almost just encourage you to see it not like uh, I need to buy a perfume, but I'm kind of searching for a perfume and kind of have fun with that, you know, um, and not just one, like you say, Marissa. I mean, I'm 
fortunate that I can kind of pick and choose, but I also think, um, you know, you don't necessarily use more if you have a few on the go, um, but you kind of express yourself. And so I often, you know, people will say to me straight up front, uh, I don't like sweets, you know, and then you get a little, ask a few questions and you get a little bit further down, you think actually it's not that they don't like sweet, it's that they don't, they don't particularly like fruity or, you know, they might love this kind of ambery, you know, where it's this very rich, uh, leathery kind of sweetness. And so I think I just try and get rid of the like preconceived notions and, and kind of have fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think fragrance, um, as we can all attest is, is really tied to emotion and, and memory. Um, so I love the idea of gifting, you know, fragrance to, to anybody on any occasion, because they're always going to think of that time you thought of them. And, and if you're someone special to them, they're going to think of you every time they wear it. So I think they'll love it in that sense alone. Right. So like we said, you can almost rock any of these fragrances. They're all beautiful. Blue Mercury would not have picked them if they were not. So any of them are great. Um, and I think with Father's Day coming up, this is a great time to, you know, buy the dad in your life a bottle, especially while we have this gift of purchase going on today. So if anybody's new on the call, I just wanted to show you if you buy a, um, Oval bottle, you're going to get three deluxe samples of Oval, three different scents to try, and the three scents are Nurture, which we spoke about, um, Golden Neroli, which is a bestseller, and Cobalt Amber. So those are really basically the top three. So you're in good hands there, so you'll get something for yourself and be able to give a gift. And then for Hermetica, you're going to get three deluxe samples with a Hermetica purchase. So you're going to be sampling Dark Oud, which is, if you're into ouds, you're just going to love it. Um, source one, which we spoke about on the call, so you'll get to try that on its own, and I encourage you to try layering it as well. And Amber Bee, which I love. It's a really yummy, sophisticated amber. Um, I love it on men and women, so highly recommend. Um, so I thought this could be our time for maybe Hans and Aaron to jump in with any questions that some of the customers have had um, to wrap things up. I have not seen questions yet, so I encourage everybody, if you want to ask anything now, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, what I noticed to the point, because I have the starter kit here for Hermetica as well, the fragrances are really true from beginning to end. What you spray and initially smell, that's what I've been doing the whole time. You may have seen me. You smell throughout the whole time. Um, so I just sprayed the source and I like that a lot as well. Um, my favorite is the Jade. I like that one. Um, but yeah, if anybody has questions. Uh, okay, we got one question here coming. Um, um, yeah, so this is a Hermetica question. They're asking if we're not using alcohol as the base, what liquid carrier are we using? And um, I'll let John jump in, but again, that is that patented moisturizing base that John could tell us a little bit more about. Uh, yes, we're using we're using a, a, a base and it's called Innocent and it's a, pa a patented base that we have um, that is actually a moisturizing base. So it's a base that can be used in a skincare as well. And it's a base that really helps the perfume project from that base going forward. So it works into your skin. So it's, um, it's just a very natural way of, of, um, of wearing a perfume without having an evaporating effect. Awesome, thank you. Um, Elizabeth is asking us a very intelligent fragrance question. They are clearly an aficionado. They want to know with such limited quantities of ambergris being sourced in Ireland, um, what we are using, you know, in its place. So I don't know, um, both of you well, have amber accords in your perfumes, if you'd like to give some anecdotes on that. Well, I think, I think anyone who's using, um, who's making a fragrance and saying they're using a natural ambergris, it's, it's very rare because you can't keep stability and you can't keep a, a quantity going for years because there isn't a source of it. And the ambergris you pick up on a beach is different each time. So we actually use an amber molecule uh, because that gives us, uh, it's a man-made molecule uh, in our fragrances and that gives us um, a consistency and we know exactly what we have over time. And we use it and it's actually called Amber Bee, that fragrance we use a lot in. And it's got a honey and the honey is a special dark honey <clears throat> that comes from Yemen. So it's kind of got an Amber Bee, which is an amber mixed with a honey color. 
Awesome. And um, Francis, I know obviously cobalt amber. So being 100% yes. natural, what do you guys do in that circumstance? So we, um, our, in cobalt amber, we're referring to amber as an accord, not uh, amber, amber gray, the ingredient. And so amber as an accord is for us, uh, normal, traditionally it's uh, labdanum and vanilla um, and then other resins. And so for us, it's labdanum, vanilla, uh, tonka bean and cacao is, is kind of the, the amber base in cobalt amber. Awesome. Um, so I have a question here from Kim that I'll, I'll just try to articulate myself. So Kim is asking, are both brands 100% natural? So I think this, this stems back to the opening of the call where I think some people get confused with, you know, clean beauty or conscious beauty and um, us, you know, just using that term lightly. Um, I think conscious is the perfect word as we've all agreed that Blue Mercury uses because um, it basically just means it was thoughtfully made. So whether that means thoughtfully made with clean um, synthetics or thoughtfully made through the use of 100% naturals. So Opal is 100% plant derived, all natural. Chromatica is uh, green chemistry. So really sustainably sourced, um, clean mix of naturals and synthetic based on, you know, John, you, you always you more articulately, beautifully say kind of why you choose natural versus synthetic in each, each moment, if you could explain that. Well, 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 there's a perfect example of using amber. So if you want to use amber, you can use an amber core or you can have an amber molecule. And, um, you know, today, if we didn't use any sort of modern chemistry, we wouldn't be anywhere because it's, it's the development. So we, we believe in using the best of man-made and the best of natural. And, and making this alchemic, uh, like alchemy, putting the best together and getting the best results. Um, talking about green chemistry, what is it? Green chemistry is when we're taking, making a fragrance molecule from a byproduct from another industry. For example, Lily of the Valley molecule, um, we actually use orange peel. So orange peel fermented to make Lily of the Valley. We also used um, waste paper to make another molecule. So there's a lot of things like that which are taking, which are recycled, being reused, um, which is just creating value in the whole world. So we just believe in trying to find the most sustainable, wherever there's green chemistry involved, and wherever we can source closer to the source, close the source locally as well. Amazing. Um, okay, and um, Hans and Aaron, there's a couple of questions here about kind of um, helping like maybe find the right suit for them if they're vanilla or they're woody. Um, maybe these one-offs, we can specifically answer one-on-one -on -one after the call. What do you think? Um, I think it's interesting to, um, you know, I was, I was gonna ask actually if one of you, John or Francis, have a fragrance that you did use before prior to founding, finding um, your companies that you that you could speak to maybe that you know that you've liked in the past and now that you fall in love with one of your own just to maybe have a little bit of a vantage point for for the clients to understand what you know what they could compare it to yeah. um <laughs> do you want to take it john um well no, i'll let you I'll let, I'll let you go first this one francis <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's maybe. I uh, I was gonna say what what I would what I would say would be a great takeaway from that is the perfect example. Like I said, a lot of people come to us with designer fragrances, and they'll say that I've been wearing this for the past ten years. Everybody knows it. Everybody's wearing it. I want to transition to something more niche. You know, what can you recommend? So in that regard, I love that question, right? So if you've worn the same vanilla from the same designer, I won't name names, and you want to come in and you want to try something different, because um, that was one of the questions in the comments. So, you know, if you are into vanilla and you're looking at Opal, I would say Cobalt Amber for me has that vanilla vibe going on. And somebody's asked me for something woody within the Hermetica collection. Um, I mean, you can go a couple different ways, but I love vertical mood personally, and I think that just opens the conversation about mood. So anybody that doesn't know, it's a really precious wood. Um, it has great light, uh, layers of depth to it, and I think the vertical mood, it's the international number one seller, and I think just because it wears so beautifully on women and men. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Hans, but that would be yeah. my take on the matter. That's good. That's <laughs> relatable. That's exactly what I meant, Jeff. Yeah. Awesome. Um, anybody else want to have any questions for us before we wrap up? Okay, well, I would just like to thank so much to both founders, Francis and John. 
Um, I think this was really insightful, even for me. As much as I talk to, I learn something new every time. Um, and I'm really grateful for Blue Mercury giving us this platform and you know spreading the word about Conscious Beauty and these two amazing brands. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and I've posted our contact information in the chat, um, and we do have one location in Chicago that um, can fulfill some orders today if anybody's interested. Like I said before, we offer double points on rewards until tomorrow. And then there's also um, a treat for you if you purchase $100 in either brand. Marissa's showing it <laughs> right there. Um, it's only available when you check out on the bluemercury.com site, okay? Um, okay, any last question? Okay, yeah, thank you. All thank right. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for spending Friday. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.